morning. Good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I have been walking and running on my Sears Life Styler treadmill of late. The scenery is always the same. I have a blank wall that I look at. I've tried to change the scenery by turning sideways and looking at the other wall. I don't recommend you do that, not when the treadmill is <laughs> Now the treadmill, I can move it up and down, I can change the speed, uh, but it's still the same wall. Kind of boring, kind of not very interesting. The treadmill of life sometimes involves boring moments as well. Sameness and downtimes. Times when we need a pick-me-up. At these times, uh, we need to stop when we listen and listen to God and God's word. In our Old Testament lesson, Jeremiah said concerning God, I am a God near at hand, not a God afar off. And in our Hebrew lesson this morning, which is the basis for our sermon, we read, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us looking to Jesus the founder and perfecter of our faith we are not running this race alone this race of faith uh, others have run this face, uh, race before us and we had a long list of people who ran this race of faith in our lesson this morning we are running it together like a family runs together, helping one another out as we run and supporting one another. A few weeks ago, my wife and I uh, drove, uh, flew to South Dakota, our annual visit there, uh, to visit uh, family and friends. And uh, we stayed for two weeks, almost two weeks, uh, in a retirement center. Now, some of you might groan and say, well, that sounds interesting. But it was interesting. Uh, we, my sister and brother-in-law live in a very nice retirement center. And um, the people there are different. Uh, some of them are walking <coughs> the walk of the older people. And some of them are using canes. And some of them were in wheelchairs. And some of them had uh, walkers. And we do not want to downplay the fact that they might be walking a little slower or having to use some kind of aid in which to get around. We have to realize that they are still rock walking, they are still running in their way. They are still running the race of faith, looking to Jesus, who is the founder and perfecter of their faith. Don't criticize them because they're moving a little slower. They are running their race of faith just like we are running our race of faith. In the middle of our 12-day visit, we uh, rented a car and spent two days driving 600 miles in order to, make, to visit three friends, long-time friends. Uh, and uh, so we traveled part of South Dakota, all of Minnesota, and into Wisconsin uh, for, for two short hour of visits with each of these three people, because they're all in retirement centers. And um, you would think that that would not be very enlightening either, but it, but it was enlightening. Louise, who is 80, volunteers every day in the library in her retirement center. Carrie, uh, a nurse uh, at age 78, has for 15 years gone to Ethiopia, Africa, in order to establish clinics and schools for the people there. Uh, for 15 years, she has raised enough money to support 150 kids every year to go to the schools, and there's a school uh, in, named in her name. Uh, so in other words, in her own time and on her own dime, Carrie travels to Africa twice a year, stays about a month each time, and then comes back and coordinates all of her efforts. Uh, or, or the last one we visited, uh, he's one of the youngest residents at age 83 in his retirement center. Orb uh, is single and is the favorite dance partner for many of the older <laughs> ladies in his retirement center. But he recently signed up for an advanced Bible study. 
and AG83. So all three of these are still running the race, looking to Jesus, who is the founder and perfecter of their faith. Driving through uh, South Dakota, Minnesota, and Wisconsin this time of the year, it's a great experience. If you haven't done it, you should do it. Last Sunday I mentioned that it gets hot and humid, but it's beautiful. That everything is green. In the summer, everything is green. We drove through 600 miles of green trees and pastures, green fields of corn and soybeans and hay. In the fall, winter, and spring, they have different colors, but now it's green. Everything's green. We drive by pastures and there'd be cows and calves, reminding us of the cycle of life, the young and the old. We would pass by farmsteads. You'd see a house and a barn surrounded by trees, all green, looking beautiful. It reminded us of the cycle of life and the fact that we're running a life of faith in Jesus and we need to look to Jesus, our founder and protector of our faith. Now back in Sioux Falls in the retirement center, uh, we had breakfast every morning with Sig. And Sig spends his time three days a week working out in the fitness center. They've got a full-time physical therapist there. And then the rest of the time he spends in the woodworking shop. And Sig makes little crosses made out of walnut wood, heart shaped with crosses embossed on them and uh, offered into them. Uh, and letter openers with little crosses on them. Spends all of his time making these crosses and Christian symbols and then gifts them to the other, uh, uh, to the other people at the, in the retirement center. So you're wondering why I'm mentioning so much about Sig other than the fact that he is a Norwegian, like I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sig is 93 and a World War II survivor. During the war, he had two ships sunk out from underneath him by German torpedoes. And after the one sinking and after he was rescued, he had no way of letting his family in Norway know that he was still safe. And he couldn't write a letter because the Germans were occupying Norway. And so instead, he mailed his parents a can of Norwegian sardines and they knew that their son was safe. So Saint continues to run the race, looking to Jesus, creating works of art, Christian art, and then gifting them to other people. And so we are encouraged this morning to run this race, uh, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. The, the day of Saint's birthday, um, after breakfast, we had breakfast with him every morning. Um, I said to say, happy birthday, hang in there. Uh, because I knew I'd be leaving. And Sig said, well, what alternative do I have? <laughs> and what, alter what alternative do we have for running the race of faith? We do not have one. We could crawl into a cave and hibernate. We could wake up and realize we're not getting anywhere on this treadmill of life and just kind of give up. Uh, but we're reminded that fish, a live fish, always swim upstream or into the current, facing the current of life. And buffalo, which is the an state animal for South Dakota, the buffalo, when there's a fierce winter storm, they stand facing into the storm, eyeing the storm. And we too are to face into the storms of life, into the streams of life, and to run the race of faith that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. We are not finished. And I've got some images I want to flash up on the screen and like to have you tell me whether or not they're finished. Is that finished? No, it's, a, it's going to be a bear whenever it's complete. The next one, that's an owl. Is that finished or unfinished? It's finished. Okay. That's a buffalo. Finished. That's a buffalo laying down, finished. And that's going to be a bear, unfinished. Those are two of my granddaughters, unfinished. <laughs> <laughs> and that my wife is in the background and her sister is on your face. And what would you see, finished or unfinished? Unfinished. We are still in the race of faith, 
we are still running. Uh, my uncle, who was artist warrior of South Dakota, was a sculpturist, and that was some of his work finished and unfinished. Um, but he would say to his sculpturing classes, he'd show them a chunk of wood and, or, a, or a rock, a stone, and he would say, there's an image in there. All you have to do is bring it out. We were created in God's image. And God's image is in, in us. All we have to do is allow that image and faith to come forth so that we can show and demonstrate to others to keep running the race of faith, looking to Jesus, who is the perfecter of our faith and the founder. Amen. Amen.